Hello and welcome to Spring Commander Forge Alliance Forever. <clears throat> this is a ladder game on Williamson's Bridge. 5x5 map, Snowbound, better known as Bloodier. Is Cybern, he always calls Cybern, I believe. He did before on, when he played ladder and he seems to be doing it again now. And patchy patchy patchy, it is Tora Tora Bar. Going random and getting A on, of course. So, good matchup for for Torin, of course. A on a 5x5 map, very strong. Thanks to the Aurora. I just give such a very nice advantage. So let's see what the builds will be. So this map is, well, it's a GPG map. And one of the things about the build, I would say, is that the mechs are quite far away. So I think this is quite fine, building two mechs with the ACU. You don't really want 10 build power walking around quite a lot. But you could make three, but it's going to take you a long time to walk around. So, we also have quite a bit of reclaim. You see there's a few tree groups here. So, I think you could you could really horror build hard on this map. Because you have, you know, like four or five tree groups here. Rocks in many locations. More tree groups. You could get a pretty sick build. Now, Torn has a, actually a nice one here. You look at the timing of his reclaim. He's just running out of mass, then he gets that big rock. Bloodier now has more reclaim, and he's actually using it all. Two land factories already done, only three P gens. So, notice that he has only three P gens, he also only has three mass extractors. And he also has just uh, a bit of power reclaim as well, about 400. So, delaying mexes allowed him to. Uh, get two factories very quickly on low power and that should give him a bit of a tank advantage it looks like he lost this fight here patchy patchy with some nice nice micro and surviving on 12 HP now sending him forward that's just a suicide we have second air and it's ghetto it's a ghetto build but uh, maybe, it's... oh, it's actually very nice timing actually. So the transport is going to be done. I mean, it could be slightly better, but that's pretty, that's pretty good. I don't think he, see, this is going to be improvised for sure anyway. Maybe he has an idea of how to do a get a build on this map, but that was, that's a nice one. He has the ghetto finished. The labs are finished just slightly before the transport. Now gonna get some more build power in his base at this factory so that he can build more tanks here. I would actually not build any engineers out here. Because he really needs more tanks. Under I think it's slightly risky to make a ghetto as Aeon versus a Cybern because it could be Well you might expect a Cybern to make some some air quite early, but you know any build like this is gonna be Risky, and this is gonna pay off for sure. Three engineers go down, and Mantis dying. Useless Mantis in the base. Kind of bad for Bloodier to have all these Mantis in the base now. They're not useful. They should be moving across the map because Torn is not gonna have any units. Also, building this PD. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a bit of a misplay from Bloodier, but this is exactly what makes builds like this work is people are not going to react perfectly in the heat of the moment when something unexpected happens i mean how often do you see a ghetto build these days it's very quite rare so bloodier gonna make more engineers needs to replace the engineers in his base and start using his mass again he's losing map control 
And now he's sent Mantis across the map. And they're being intercepted. <laughs> so, can't even send Mantis across without Antir supporting them. And then he'd also likely need a... A scout, a lance... <clears throat> God damn. A land scout with the anti-air so that he can actually use the range. And now, this Bloodier's ace you is going to be taking a fair bit of damage, but actually the anti-airs arrive. Now one mistake we can see from Torrin, he made too many inties, I mean, making any inties is kind of bad. He saw that there was no anti-air in the base, or no uh, air factory I should say, and so he could have just gone for straight bombers after he made those engineers. And now this ghetto is still alive. I'd love to see how much vet these these labs have. They killed quite a lot. Now one one thing he didn't kill was any power, which is unfortunate, but he's definitely definitely paid for himself, stopped all the rate. The mantis here did some damage over here. You can see dead mantis stopped the PD going up, which was there to defend the was going to try and stop the commander from pushing. Now Bloodier are going to take some more damage from the, the labs. See, quite nice DPS when you have six labs firing at once and it looks great for Apache Apache now. There's going to be a lot of anti-air so maybe the bombers won't be able to do anything. Although, all the anti-airs are around Bloodier's commander. Nothing in the base and no radar to spot a nice engineer battle. Well, not even a battle. Just domination by Turin. This ghetto might be about to die. The thing with the ghetto is once it's about to die, you can just unload those labs and maybe they'll be in a position to do something. I think this ghetto is very close to going down. The missiles are coming for it. And Bloodier really wants to push on this side. He doesn't know what's coming here, but he has PD ready to try and hold off the commander. And you can also put... Putting uh, Medusa behind the PD is also very good, especially versus an, uh, an Aeon player. This ghetto is doing an insane amount of work. How many kills do these guys have? I really hope he unloads them so I can see. <laughs> because he just kill he's just killing everything. Killing all these Medusa instantly, basically. Oh no, it's gonna die. Oh, he gets out of range of the missiles before they land. Might be time to drop these guys out or even repair the transport with some engineers. And now Bloodier making a push. He's brought a lot of Medusa with him. See, and that's what you need if you're going to take on a base because there's likely to be two on point defense defending and also if you want to actually take out the factories in any reasonable time and the power, you're going to need the damage and the AoE from the Arties. So we have a lot of Arties moving to the top. But you're getting, getting pushed back. He needs to uh, get his vet level. There we go. And he also needs maybe a radar further forward and a few more units needs to farm as many of these Aurora as possible so that you can actually continue pushing. Torrent not doing much, just trying to keep map control here. Built a PD in mid but he has nothing to defend it so the Arties likely be able to take it out. Some reclaim being left for Torrent to grab and Torrent is in still a solid position. He does have more score, he has 1k more total mass and it looks like he built a second transport that's now it's full HP to put the labs in and I missed it no I could have seen the if the labs had vet damn I'm actually gonna check that after the game maybe we'll get another chance <laughs> and now blood ears PDs are undefended and they're gonna die very quickly to the fervors which are just very very good at killing PD, a lot of damage and very accurate. 
Let's see if there is some Medusa defending there. Probably could have saved the PD. He's rebuilding on top of the old one. And this one has just barely survived. What is the plan for Bladir? He's just gathering resources for... Gathering army for another push and trying to... Uh, micro his base to hold on as long as possible. Also building power at the front because he's going to need more power and... It looks like we're moving... This is base trade scenario here. Both ACUs on opposite sides looking to push. Torin has so many units in his base. Whereas Bloodir has all of his units outside Torin's base. So this is like... This is the key difference here. Which... Which is the correct way to... To approach the scenario. Do you want most of your units with your ACU? Or in your base? And we're about to find out, I think. Torin taking quite a lot of fire from this PD. It's gonna lose a lot of health. Of health and... Uh, his fervors are... Taking out the engineers before the PD, so that there will be no more PD made. Turin has more mass income this whole time, pretty much. It's only slightly, but uh, it's adding up. And now Bladir pushing. A lot of Aurora have been killed here. The Medusa doing did quite a lot, and Turin may be overcommitted here. Should have held back. There's also no. I don't see many PD here. This one is almost finished. It should be should be finished. But there's none on the top side. And Bloodir's going to push in. The Medusa are in range. Now factories are going to go down. Bloodir's pushing in. The PD is not in range. It's not a good place for a PD. Needed some up here. Where Bloodir is standing pretty much. And on the other side. Bombers have come in to do more damage. A lot of P-Gens dying. Fervor is going to work and there's only a few units left. The power is the main the main thing to kill in a base trade scenario. You can see Torn has all of his power in his base, some of it at the back here, and he has more power quite a lot than Bladir. Bladir is remaking power on the front here, also getting some tree reclaim. Well, what Bloodir needs to do now is just get all of, well, get rid of this PD and also get rid of all the PGens as fast as possible. Over here, he's trying to kill Torin, who is on very low HP bombers and the ghetto. <laughs> the ghetto only has three labs on it now. I guess they ate some shots from Antier and Torin is not going to die. He got a vet level there. And so he survives. He also has the sensor upgrade, which is quite interesting. It's a very cheap upgrade. You give him insanely good vision, make sure he never runs uh, out of radar range or vision for his Aurora. So it's pretty good. And now, Bladir, I think he's moving a bit slowly here. He should be reclaiming factories and shooting P gens much faster because he has lost his base. He, now, Thankfully, he got some pigeons up in time, and but there's quite a lot of air which can aim for his power. Ooh, could be bad. And he's now sending his units back. I think he should have left the Medusa here, and then just split attack all the all the pigeons. I think that would be. That would be the play, get rid of all the power. If you look at Torn, he's still, he's only just now building p -gens. And he doesn't even need to, what he needs is power, or uh, factories more like. Needs engineers, needs factories. This would be a fine place to build some factories. Bodir loses the last of his base. And Torn still has quite a lot. Bodir shooting factories. It's not good. Should reclaim factories and shoot pigeons. Now he has anti air to defend his new base. And he has a few units. So, what do you need in a. How do you play a base trade scenario? Well, 
as I was saying, you need to kill the power as fast as possible so that your opponent has a big, has a difficult time rebuilding a new base. And also, you, then you need engineers. You need build power so that you can actually uh, grab the reclaim from the dead base and and rebuild and get your own factories up, your new factories. So you need to see build power, and then of course if your opponent has leftover units from the base trade, as Torrin does... Oh no, he just shot the transport, it landed. <laughs> Damn, that's... That hurts. Still, still Torrin's base is alive, so Torrin should win. Basically, he should win from here. All he needs to make are... Factories. Engineers, he needs engineers. There's no way he actually probably has more units as well than Vladir. He does. He has air units. I think he lost his bombers, but uh, yeah, this is this is one torrent build build factories here. Vladir still has not finished this base because he lost his arties to uh, or no, he's retreating his arties again. Yep, yeah. so do you have a lot of engineers coming out here now? Trying to get more factories up, get more power. Because he's going to lose about 100 more power from his base. And we're going to need some PD to defend the ACU again. This Torn comes after Blood Ear's base. There's quite a few, quite a few units here, so, but I think uh, Torn should be able to push this. He also has good map control, still has... He has m most of the map. Come on, Torrin. Build, build, build. Build, build, build. Okay, now we're retreating. Trying to kite the units back. And that gives Blood Ear plenty of time to get a PD up. And he may, should be able to save his power. Look at the mass income, 25 to 7. If we look at the reclaim, a lot more for Blood Ear. 5.5k, he's getting more of it now, still. From Torn's base. p leave quite a nice amount of reclaim. Oh. Yeah, look at that. Several hundred in mass, still there. Still quite a lot for... Torrent, all these factories leave significant mass. And Torrent still has the advantage of the Aeon. And he still has all of these leftover Antis, which should ensure air control for at least a while. Now, Blood Ears PD is going to die. And then, uh, soon after that, his P Gens should be dying. He's remaking more again. This time in Torrent's base. And now the ACs are going to face off against each other. But again, Torn is pushed back. Blood Ear has full veteran C, 15k, 45 per second regen. Torn has to retreat in the face of that ACU. He has only two vets. He almost has three, but only two so far and about half the HP. Of Blood Ear, so he can't fight this. And Blood Ear's reclaim is, is skyrocketing. Got another 2k since we last checked. Meanwhile, Torrin barely changed from what I can tell. Maybe got a couple hundred. And Blood Ear's playing this well. He's adding another air factory. He wants air back. And once he has air. Oh, look at that. Is that a T2 Max? And he still has a full mass part. <laughs> See, all these factories should be done about well, two minutes ago. And uh, he could even go for ACU upgrade. If he had been building power, I think Torn was slow in that in that base trade scenario. And now Bladir has basically come back. Now 8.3. That's an 
got almost another 1k again so very good reclaiming from Bladir. a lot of mass was left in the space because I think I think there's more power for Torin in his base so and a lot more units so uh, more reclaim left and Bladir grabbed it very quickly and it looks good for him but how is he gonna beat the army see he does have less units still I'm pretty sure yes yeah, certainly Torrent has all of his units with his ACU pretty much we have a few on the left he can do some raiding still Torn has a lot of mass in the bank so maybe What should we see? Well, we need some anti-airs mixed in. There goes that bomber. Gets a pass though, gets some kills. Bladir living on the edge. We're gonna run down the hill, which the hill blocks so many shots on this map quite often. There's a few hills which are hard to spot. This hill you probably not know about unless you looked at the map over here. This is a hill as well. We have kind of three levels which is why it's Williamson's bridge because this is higher than the other levels and we do have a commander upgrade so much mass for Apache but here he's using all of his not overflowing and he's making excuse me he's making the gun Apache has is making the range gun but he already has sensor so he unless he wants to get rid of sensor which I don't think he does he can't get the speed gun I mean he could could get rid of sensor for that maybe the way to go but he also does not have power to make the speed gun right now he has a couple of storages somewhere I have both here yeah, don't build pigeons beside these storages. <laughs> I oh, it's always funny when I see people build pigeons around storages like this, even on small maps. I mean, it's like the juiciest target. You know how expensive four pigeons in a mass storage is, and they'll die to two bombers. So please don't don't surround don't surround your storage with four pigeons. And. Now, Bladir is in range. Oh, Apache retreats. Bladir doesn't have stealth. So, and it's also useless if he did have stealth because of the sensor upgrade giving vision. And you can see Bladir really focusing on air. He wants a lot of air units so that he can take out the the Aurora and now he has a nice nice looking army so many Medusa so many Medusa on the left he's trying to push you can see Torrid quite on point with his uh, Aurora micro falling back towards his PD it's gonna get a pretty nice trade even though he has less Aurora but bloody are looking very dangerous on the right side pushing with this gun commander Torrent can't fight, he has so much less HP, less regen. Now he can't get those HP boosts from Vet, but the Vet isn't going to come too quickly because Blood Air, well he has good micro, he's going to have his ACU out front and the units behind and he also has the longer range Medusa behind so Torrent's going to have to really focus on hitting those specific units if he wants to uh, get this next vet which would help him a lot versus the commander and now he's imagine a couple of bombers in this mix Bladir immediately retreating now as Torin moves in and tries to get the kill the hill is blocking overcharges it's blocking a lot of shots and here come the bombers Oh, they miss horribly. Still get 
I bet three kills maybe. And Torrent losing a lot of units. Bombers dropping so weirdly, still getting many kills. Torrent's air finally reacts and takes them out off map. This is gonna be a lot of reclaim outside Torn's base now. The the Medusa are killing a lot of the reclaim. And actually but here with a lot of air coming in. And now retreating. Look at all these Medusa down behind the hill. Where they're difficult to shoot. Definitely the AC you can't shoot them. And Torn is on such low HP, I actually don't know how he got down to two K HP. And he's still quite far from his next vet, so... But Deer may have done enough. Wait, there's another T2 Max. And T2 land, and PD's trying to go up, I think. Torin picked the wrong strategy here of T2 Maxes and... T2 land that's... Simply dying to the... The very powerful gun commander. And now air is one for Bloodier and he can bomb all across the map with impunity. Look at all these bombers. Medusa moving in will easily kill an Oblivion turret. Because it shoots so slowly. Two on PD will not be completed. And Torrin is on solo HP. If he's just targeted he will go down very shortly. All the Medusa. Can wipe out the base, there's no units left. Well played, both players. Nice base trade scenario there. Bloodier definitely played the base trade a lot better. I think, well, he didn't do too great up here killing the base. He left it alive for quite a long time. I think he could have used the RTs to kill it faster, but. Other than that, he definitely played it much better than uh, than Torrent. He had the extra pgens quite quickly outside of his base and uh, got his build power up and rebuilt his base quickly. He used a lot of reclaim to boost him to get him back in the game because he was definitely behind in that base. That base trade should have been much more well. It was much more beneficial for. Torrent is in a better scenario. He had Bloodier's base dead a lot faster, but uh, failed to get the build power out and get all the factories up fast enough. And so, uh, and then also, I think, yeah, T2 Mexes and T2 Land was just incorrect choice. Cost him the land battle and uh, and the air battle. Also, this ACU. Because he had full HP, it was very, very scary. So once he had the gun, he was not. It was not possible to stop him with just a range gun. He would have needed double gun for sure. And yeah, but I think it shouldn't even get to that stage. If, if uh, Torrent built his factories faster and got more units out faster, he would just take the advantage, and Bloodier may never get that gun upgrade. Well played, both guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.